Leviticus chapter 18 Unlawful Lust and Unlawful Marriage and The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where they came out of, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Everything you learn in Egypt, don't you dare do it. All the Christians, whatever you learn in Egypt, you're not supposed to do it. Egypt is a type of the world in the Bible. Those worldly means, you're not to do it. At all. That's the warning. Where ye dwell, ye shall not do. After the doings of the land of Canaan, where they're going, whether they bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. They're going into a land that has been filled with vile wickedness, uh, murder, false worship. And God doesn't want them like that. Matter of fact, the reason why God has given them that land is because that land's cup has been filled to the brim. And when Israel comes into that land, it starts overflowing. Ye shall do my judgments, God speaking, and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Don't you follow the gods of Egypt, and don't you follow the gods of, of Cana. That ought to be for Christians. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So there's life listening to God. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him. To uncover their nakedness, I am the Lord. So anybody in your relationship to, anybody in your family. And we're going to go into great detail in this chapter, but verse 6 would just sum it up. But since man looks for loopholes, he looks on ways that he can endure his sin. God's going to lay it out where there is no room for a loophole. I'm telling you right now, America has allowed sodomites to marry. Women and women and men and men. The next thing, and it's already happening in America, there are people out there, you got a daughter who wants to marry her mother. You got a father who wants to marry his daughter. Now that's not allowed right now in America. There are incense laws. Incense laws. But those are going to be passed away. Because there was a time you wouldn't think that we would allow in our society two men and two women. And yet, America has given them the rights of marriage. And when America's really gone down the tubes is when we're going to violate chapter 18. Living. I know it's under the law. But as we go through these things, yeah, we're Christians. We are under mercy and grace. Would you really say by each verse of this chapter, oh, yeah, I'll do this as a Christian. It'll be a wonderful testimony. Paul dealt with the Corinthian church and said that there was a man in that church who was having relations with his father's wife. And Paul says, I'm going to turn that guy over to Satan. You're not to uh, enjoy. You're not to lavish that man. You are to throw him out. Deter him. In 2 Corinthians, we learned that man got right. He repented. And he was the church allowed him back in. And he's like, okay, now help him. So this thing it did and does happen in the church. And now today we see church signs. All are welcome. I mean all. Really, you filthy church. And then you go read Revelation chapter 3, what God says about Laodicea. Now, what we're going to see in Leviticus 18 is not Old Testament. It is, but it's not. Because it's current events today in the world. It's among the religions. You got priests of the Catholic, they're having relations with the altar boys. That's a proven fact. You got uh, Islam. Muhammad had relations with, with young children. You got Mormonism. They, you, know, they, you know, they don't do it by the law. They are married to multiple wives. They may not do it legally, but it's still done. 
And again, like I said, I just read last week, a couple weeks ago, it doesn't matter when, there was a there was a, a, a mother arrested for having relations with her daughter, and they're seeking now to get approved by the government. So the nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother, shall thou not uncover. Ham had trouble with that. He saw the nakedness of his father and went and bragged to his brothers. Um, Reuben had relations with his father's wife. One of the handmaids of Rachel or Leah. I forget which one. So now God started set the rules. He said, well, the children of Adam and me, didn't they have relations with each other? Yeah, there's no law back then. Like there was no law for Cain killing his brother. There was no law. Until after Cain murdered. And now God set in, in the law. All right, if you did were involved in that, now there's a law that says you're not to do it no longer. Now it's written. Shall not uncover. And yes, the expression there is is innocent is uh, relation, sexual relation. It's also just the nakedness. And today you have magazines, you have internet, or peeping, or the beach. Or the beach. You're not even to see the nakedness. And Jesus said in Matthew 23, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery. And it's a shameful thing to see, like my wife, my wife said to be, here's this woman, she's got kids and she's got all her private parts exposed while she's got her young little child in a diaper wearing a two-piece suit. What on earth is the difference between a bikini and a bra and panty set? Tell me. Because I'll tell you right now, you go to Walmart, you got bras and panties that are the same colors and designs as the bikini. And God says, no, not even a nakedness. You realize what a woman wears on the beach today, what a man wears on the beach today, is considered in the Bible nakedness? That's why you don't want to get back to the Bible. That's why you don't want to put the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. That's why you can't bring it into schools because there's guilty. You got today, right now, I'm getting so sick and tired. I just read the headlines in the news. I'm getting so sick and tired of these teachers having relationships with their students. That's forbidden. Uncover. She is thy mother. It happened in Corinthians. First Corinthians. You got right in Second Corinthians. Thank God. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So you're not to see her purposely. And you're not to take off her clothes. Now there's accidental. And you just look, turn away and go, go off. She's not to undress for you. And you're not to undress her. Doesn't the Bible explicitly spells it out? The nakedness of thy father's wife. Again, that's Corinthians. And thou shalt not uncover. Thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. That wife, that mother, that half mother that belongs to your father, that's his. And Paul says also in Corinthians that the wife, her body is not hers, but her husband's. The husband, his body is not his. But the wives. You see where Paul got out of that out of? He got out of Leviticus 18. Paul knew the scriptures. So where he lived by the New Testament and all that. Look, the New Testament is in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is found in the New Testament. Jesus said, When a man and a woman marry, they are one. You have uncovered your father's nakedness. I thought you were talking about the mother. No, that's him too. That's one body. The nakedness of thy sister. Oh, there goes Abraham. Well, she's my half sister. She's not the sister. She's not the, uh, of his father, but of the mother, his mother, the other mother. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father. Okay, Abraham, or the daughter, the daughter of thy mother. But there was no law for Abraham. God wanted a pure race. So now that's done. Abraham was under no law. Now it's a law. Whether she be born at home 
or born or born. So see, there's no loophole. Even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Don't you dare remove her clothes. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, your daughter-in-law, or of thy daughter's daughter, your daughter-in-law. Granddaughter. I'm going to have a little problem with these relations of what the titles are. Or of thy daughter's daughter. That's your grand granddaughter. Even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. For theirs is thy own nakedness. That's your family. That's your kin. That's of you. I guarantee that's happening somewhere today in the world. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter. And there's Abraham and Sarah. Begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, your aunt. She is thy father's near kinswoman. I guarantee that's happened somewhere in the world. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, aunt. For she is thy mother's near kinswoman. So, she's my half-mother. He is my half-father. Uh, half so, uh, the relations on that side of the family, God says, is just as pure. Listen, a step-parent is just as much as your parent in the eyes of God and the Bible. And the children that thereof. Here it is. And he says it's thy. It's in their kinship. It's in your fathers. It's in the mothers. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. That's your uncle. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thy aunt. Thank you, God, for telling me that. God wrote that in there because I know he has a problem with the relationship titles. Okay, and I do. I have such trying to figure out who belongs to what. I think the Bible always says kins. What, what part of the family are you? I'm a kinsman. <laughs> thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. So see that wife? The husband and wife, one. And that's the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and everything else. That is, thou shalt not commit adultery. So if you violate anywhere in Leviticus 18, if that other party you're violating, you have, you have broken two commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not covet. And if you have a desire for that opposite sex, that's coveting. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Oh, you know that's happening today. Here's a woman of no relationship to the family. It's just a woman and her daughter is sweet to you too, so you take them both. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. Kinswoman, it is wickedness. So you got this woman you're with, and someone in her family you like too, and you get together with them. Notice God said that's wicked. That is wicked. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister, to vex her, to uncover her nakedness besides the other in her lifetime. Uh, to, to take a wife to be to her sister. I w I'm taking that as you cannot marry your wife's sister. Yeah. And well, then only while what, she's alive. while she's alive, and the only way you can marry her is when she's dead. Your wife is dead. Because it says, beside the other in thy lifetime. So you can't be married to a woman and sleep but around John with her Baptist sister. Told out. Yeah, um, the ruler of the nation there. And that's what put him in jail. Yeah. But, you know, 
I see some of these court television things that that's exactly what's going on. Be aware this stuff is going on today in America. Nothing new under the sun. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart from her uncleanness. Now we talked about it in 15. Here is a woman who has her monthly cycle. We have been told she's unclean. This would be also a woman who has given birth to a man or a female child because she is unclean for a period of time. Leviticus 15, 19 to 24, and 20, verse 28. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally. Look at that word, carnally. And I've been in churches where they've had a carnival. Carnal, that's spoken in, in 1 Corinthians. That means your flesh or your worldly. Thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife. Commandment number 10. Thou shalt not commit adultery. To defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed, your children, pass through the fire to Molech. That's an Amorite fire god. He's also called Molech. He's called Milcom. And child sacrifice. The Moabite uh, god is Chemish. You'll see him too. This God, what they're doing here is they're taking their children, and this idol, this image, is brass. And in his stomach is fire, coals. It's a furnace. Like in the furnace you find in Daniel. And they would take these babies, and they put it in the arms of this, this image, this statue. And they beat drums. So you wouldn't hear their children screaming. And the, by, medical, by mechanical devices, those arms would take that baby and throw them into that fire for sacrifice. You say, oh, that doesn't happen today. On the streets of India, they will roll this elephant god down the street. And women literally take their babies from their arms and throw them in front of those wheels. And those babies are crushed in 2017. A woman will go to the doctor and say, I want to sacrifice this child that's in my womb because I have a life and nothing for that child. Happens all around the world. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord, child sacrifice. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. A man sleeping with a man like he would with a woman. It is abomination. Take the word wicked and take the word abomination. Sodomite, sodomy, lesbian, queer is abomination in the Bible. So don't you go riding around and praise God loves us too. That's a bunch of crap. C-R-A-P. Abomination. Bible says, repent in your heart, and get right with God, and turn from your sin. If any man should confess his sins, not openly parade abomination of God. Neither shall thou lie with a beast. That's, that's going to happen too. There are people in the world I have read that they marry their dogs. And they marry their dogs. Women that sleep with snakes. Women, uh, that, 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 that fortune teller slept with a snake. I can't think she's dead. Gene Dixon, I, I've been told. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therein. Bestiality. That's definitely going on in the world today. Now, sexual intercourse. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast in the act thereof. If a woman stands before the beast and does not have sexual relations with that beast, it's just like any man that looks upon a woman and lusts after his heart has already committed adultery with her. That woman, even promotion of having bestiality, she's charged. Stand before to lie down there too. It is confusion. You realize there are animals going to come out of this earth in the tribulation period. They're animals and they have blonde hair like women. 
Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. See that? Everything we read. Verse 2 to 23. Don't you do any of that. America and the world lie in pride of what we just read. They promote it. And they try to throw Christianity out the window. Back, They try to push Christianity back into the closet. Where the sodomites and the sinners are. Defile not ye yourself in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So America, in the eyes of God, as a Gentile nation, as the land of Canaanites, are Gentile, not Jewish. God says, you defile, and I'm going to kick your butt out of the land. America's getting to the point. I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the nation that will go before America. England. That's a vile, wretched na nation where the King James Bible came from. You go over there today, you wouldn't think anything would come out of a, a nation that wherever it was, the sun never set upon that nation. They sent out missionaries that loved God. And they told Israel, well, Jordan's going to have a piece of land. We'll take the 1881 perversion Bible over the 1611 Bible. That's America's following England's roots. The land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. God's going to visit the iniquity upon America. And as the land of Canaan was judged and forced out by, by Israel, most of them, God is going to judge us or he would have to apologize to the nation. He would have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he does not judge America as he judged Sodom and Gomorrah. And he ain't going to apologize to them. I do visit iniquity there upon it, and the land itself vomited. Match that with Revelation 3. And that's the church, Revelation 3. Out of her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, Jews, keeping the law, and my judgments. What's the judgment? You find somebody who's, who's sleeping with a man that's a man, you, you stone them. You find somebody who's having fa family relations, you get rid of them. You go in that land, you remove the items, you remove the pictures, you remove the, the images, you get those altars out of there. Israel falls, Judah falls to all this wickedness in Jeremiah. Neither any of your own nation, Jewish, nor any stranger, that's Gentile, you know how you know it's, it's Gentile? Paul says, I went and persecuted Christians. I did it in Jerusalem. I did it in Judea. And I went to strange places. What's that strange place? Where Gentiles were. Damascus is not a Jewish nation. It's a Gentile nation. He was on the road to Damascus. This follows not only for Jews. It follows for Gentiles too. Strangers. That sojourn among you. For all these abominations, America, have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the, the land is defiled. The land of America. God bless America. Oh, that land is defiled. You are lying. Every hand should be over the heart and pledge allegiance to America. What? The defiled America? That violates what God says. God said it's wickedness. It's an abomination. God bless America. That's an oxymoron. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you, I'm reading the Bible. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And if you're not going to match the Bible because you're a Baptist, you're wrong. You're going to stand the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to get ashes. Pledge allegiance to the flag. What about pledge allegiance to the Bible? Pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ who suffered on the cross. By his stripes we are healed. Not red and white stripes of a piece of cloth. Foolish. I pledge allegiance to Jesus. It ain't my home. I'm passing through. My home's New Jerusalem. 
that the land spew not you out also. It happens in Jeremiah. It happens when e Ezekiel's writing. It happens at the end of Second Chronicles. Babylon came in, took them out of the land. Why? Because they're doing the same sins. And the world's doing the same sins. As it spewed out the nations that were before you. That matches Revelation 3 with the church. It was going on in Corinthians. It's going on in the churches today. Uh, 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 the pastor ran off with the piano player. The pastors ran off with these people. The music director is going over there. This guy has stolen this. The treasurer has done this. It's happening in your churches. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations. Verse 2 all the way down to 23, 24. See, now they're all abominations. Did you get that? Whosoever commit any of these abominations, what we just read. So sodomy is a double abomination. What that man did in the Corinthian church with his father's wife is an abomination. Or under grace. He's an abomination. You know what Paul said? Paul already said. Paul says, I turned that man over to Satan. I'd rather Satan kick his butt, take him down in the grave. That the fact is that he will not ruin his life anymore for the, the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Better if he died now than kept on living in sin. That's a pretty bold statement. And yet that guy got right, he repented, and Paul says, take him in the church and admonish him as a brother and help and pray for him. He got right. Who's ever committed any of these abominations, even the souls, plural, takes two to tango, that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance. That you commit not any of these abominable customs. Ooh, they're customs. And they're abominable. Three abominables. Which were committed before you. That you defile not your, you defile yourself. That I am the Lord your God. So a Christian would have no doing, no business doing what we just read about. At all. It does not. Stand up God. It does not promote God. It promotes your flesh. And the Bible says the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit is against the flesh. Carnality. That's the word in here. But vacation Bible. We're going to have a carnival as a vacation. You've already put the word, a worldly word, into the church. So there's no difference. You didn't look up the Bible when it came to words. And this stuff is not a, and it's all around the world, and it's in churches. Sorry to say. 